Andrea, you're a very successful presenter on Loose Women for many years, and now you've gone into business. How did that happen? <laughs> Do you know, I just woke up one day and thought, oh, I fancy doing something different. Um, I'd been working on This Girl Is On Fire quietly on the side for quite a few years before I decided to make the leap and, and do it full time. And why did I decide to make the leap? Because I realized it wasn't something that I could continue doing as a bit part thing. Um, Nick had already given up his job to, to work full time on it. I was trying to oversee it and, and work together with him, but still splitting myself into a thousand pieces doing presenting work. And it just made sense that I needed to actually commit. So the, the, the biggest obstacle really was overcoming the fear of making that jump in the first place. Loose Women is a tremendously successful television brand. It's an institution. You were part of that institution. What made you feel you needed to write books on the side? Why wasn't TV enough? Of course, your first book was Confessions of a Menopausal Woman at a time when talking about the menopause publicly was, there was less of it about than there is now, may I put it mm. like that. What made you feel you needed to do more to assert yourself on the page as well as being on camera so regularly? Because telly wasn't where I was meant to be. Uh, it was where I found myself. So you I made a pretty good impression I, I of somebody right. who's meant to be on telly, if I may say yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, I did all right. I, I actually, um, I moved to London when I was 24, literally with no contacts and everything owned in the back seat of my car to be a writer. And through misreading that. a job advert, ended up accidentally auditioning to be a weather presenter, which I thought was really funny. And I thought I can write a piece about what's it like to audition to be a weather presenter, but I ended up getting the job. And I ended up quitting what was a, a staff position as a writer and production editor to go into TV for what I thought would be a short period of time. And because I ended up working on breakfast telly, I was able to do reporting as well. So I was kind of feeding the two beasts, if you like. So I was nurturing my my interviewing skills, but I was just doing it in a different way. But writing has always been my first love. And it's funny, um, Confessions of a Menopausal Woman was actually my second book. Oh. Uh, I've actually written four. People forget about my first one, which was an autobiographical book about growing up in the Caribbean, living around the world when I was uh, younger, before my telly life. I feel like I've had about 10 lives. People Where did you grow up? I actually grew up in Trinidad. Wow. The, good carnival, Trinidad. Very good carnival. Yeah, good carnival. And I make a very good rum punch. <laughs> and where did you meet um, Andrea and Nick? And do you see her as a television person first or as a writer first? Uh, well, we met on a blind date that was uh, set up by a makeup artist uh, from, from ITV. Mm. And uh, I mean, that was eight and a half years ago now. But where I see her, do, do you know what's been amazing? I, I think obviously for the first period of our relationship was very much, it, it was Andrea as I knew her, but mm. she was definitely the lady off the telly. Mm. You know, you can't help that when you walk around and, and you get people shouting her name and all sorts of bits. And, um, but the most fascinating time is spending the last year and a half with her where she's really committed to what she wants to deliver from This Girl Is On Fire. And the change in her as an individual, the growth that she's had, I just see her now as this, not a CEO, but a CVO, a chief visionary officer. And she is bringing some great things to the table for our business and, and for the community that we serve. So, yeah. So This Girl Is On Fire, your third book, my mistake, um, given that you did the first autobiographical one, then you did Confessions of a Menopausal Woman, you, you're, you left Loose Women in, I think, 2020. You want to make it into a, a, a brand. A sort of, you're becoming a lifestyle coach. You've set up this business between you. What's the vision here, Andrew McLean? How big can this be? Oh, absolutely global. And my 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 global vision for this girl is on fire. Is we, we we wrote it out, didn't we, on our whiteboard in in our office a, a few years ago, and it felt really bold. But now it actually feels achievable. Is I want to empower 100 million women around the world to live a life they love, and what I mean by that is to have economic freedom and to have emotional freedom. And we do it by making them feel confident. We give them the the life skills that they need that they can either do better at work 
feel better at home. So for me, it's a, it's a global, um, it's a global ambition. It's a, it's a strange one to, you know, to hear you saying uh, as, as well how much I've grown in the, in the past year and a half. It's been so incremental that I haven't noticed it. It's just become, this is who I am now. Because for so many years, my identity, like you said, absolutely was wrapped up in, I'm that lady off the telly who did that thing. Whereas now I'm the lady off this Girls on Fire who does this thing. But actually, they're like a mixture of the two me's. Nick, you obviously possess between you a lot of media savvy, a lot of contacts, and a lot of a lot of brand. Both Andrea's brand, your collective brand. Uh, you're starting a business with the name of a book that's already well established by a very well-known person, if I may say so. How are you monetizing this? What's the offer to consumers? Why should I invest? Um, well, so we've spent the last sort of sixteen months understanding we, we, we created a small community to come in to our membership for a, a token fee knowing that they were going to help us create a platform that would serve women and help them find the mindset that they need to deal with what issues that they were going through in their life at that moment so with the last 16 months we've been going okay does this work for you does this work for you and we've honed this membership and Tell me about this membership. What's the age range? What's the demography? Well, and is it exclusively women? Okay, so definitely exclusively women yeah. at the moment. But yeah. this guy is on fire is going to be um, launched in uh, the third quarter of this year. Okay. And the reason it's exclusively for women is because ultimately it was because of what Andrea had gone through in her personal life that we started putting... You know, so you asked about the confessions of a menopausal woman. Mm -hmm. That was written because over 10,000 women got in touch mm. privately with Andrea in 24 hours. Mm. And it was like, we couldn't believe there After was she a... she started talking about yeah. how she was feeling. Mm -hmm. and we couldn't believe there was... you were one was... of the early ones, really. I, oh, yeah. I, I Something really big has happened in the last sort yeah. of five, 10 years. On the, and even in the last two or three years. Definitely. And, and what people don't realise is, is I got a lot of stick for it. People might think, oh, you're that menopause woman and, and you, you sort of charge the... You're at the forefront of it yes and I got slapped in the face metaphorically um, because newspapers didn't like it the press didn't like it uh, some women didn't like it a lot of men didn't like it um, but all I saw it was this is an experience that I've had I have uh, the, the the skill set to interview a doctor and get the medical information that you'll need let me put it all together mm. for you in a really mm. nice way mm. and he and here you go and for me it was it started this process of, actually, I really enjoy helping people by getting experts involved and passing on that information. So I broadened it right out. So And letting women know that they're normal to feel that the way they fit. That's really yeah. what you did, isn't it? Yeah. You are, with all respect, forgive me, the beautiful, glamorous woman off the television with the dream life. Mm. And yet you are feeling this way mm. and you're talking about that. So everyone should feel fine if they feel that way. They're yeah. not abnormal. Yeah, and whether it's about the menopause, whether it is about people talking about their mental health, which people are much more open about to discussing now, um, whether it is a crisis of confidence, whether it's a crisis of faith, whether it's a crisis of identity, we are all simply human beings doing different jobs on the, on the planet. And how I see it is that the, the more you open yourself up and talk about your experiences, you normalize it for everybody. So you've built this community, Nick. So what's the next step? So we've, we've, we've just literally, so over the 16 months, we've been creating the, the platform to host it on, which is an app. And uh, a month ago, uh, it went live on Google Play and on the App Store. Uh, now, we haven't massively promoted it because there's only so much testing that you can do mm. before turning it live. And then we just ironed out a few more of those, those glitches. But we're now in a, a, a position that we are going to be promoting it. There, there's a, a soft launch and it officially launches on July the 7th. Okay. And so how, how will the app generate revenue that you can reinvest in the business and perpetuate the business? You've obviously made a great start. It's a great concept. You know, launching an app is not a straightforward thing. There's, no. <laughs> there's, 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 there's a lot of work, a lot of executive skill to make that happen, a lot of management. So... What are you hoping to happen in the year after the 7th of July? 
Well, I think the thing is, uh, firstly, what's great is we know that what, what we've put inside the app actually works. And the 200 women that helped us, you know, modify and hone, the ripple effect on their own lives, you know, individually and their families has been amazing. So we're super excited about what this can do. There's two levels of membership because we are aware that there is a cost of living crisis out there. Mm. And access to these people, you know, it, it, it's, it's prohibitive for most. So to, to be able to do it for less than 50 pence a day, it, it, we're, we're super proud that we're able to do that. Um, so with those two platforms, we're looking to really turn up the volume, let people know about us uh, and take it global. And, you know, we've looked at other people in this arena and they've got million plus members. And that's certainly our focus, you know, empowering 100 million women uh, around the world. Well, if you get a million members, it's that ripple effect for their families. You know, we've seen it ourselves, mm. the mm. ripple effect word for our mouth. own family mm. yeah. and, and the word of mouth, etc. Mm. So, yeah, but also going on to live events and, and bits and pieces. Now with the restrictions of COVID out the way, we're looking to do our first live event as well in November, take, where we've taken, you know, what we create online, offline. And actually, we did it commercially recently um, in, in a, um, a business that really wanted to support their own staff. And so they said, look, we love what you're teaching. Could you share some of that with our staff? Because we know they're struggling a bit. So actually, we took Andrea and a few of our experts and we created a, uh, a This Girl Is On Fire mindset day that was bespoke to them. And, and the reaction w mm. was fantastic. And, and just as well, if, you know, there may be people watching thinking, you know, who the hell am I to, to tell people uh, how to change their mindset or, you know, how to live their lives? The, the, the whole concept of it is I'm using all the skills of quarter of a century of interviewing people and I mm. interview experts in their, in their field. So what I do is I bring them to you. Mm. So I, I break it down and make it interesting. And that's what and the that's app's the about. If, yeah, whatever level yeah. they come in, one of the two levels, mm. what can they expect? Is it access to people who inspire them, access mm. to medics, access to life coaches? What is it that you're offering in a nutshell? All of the above. Uh, obviously, it will depend on, on different levels in terms of uh, the the the. The most accessible level that we offer, as Nick said, it's it's around 50p a day. We do live group coaching on that. We we really interact with the women to ask them, what is it that you would like coaching on? So say, for example, I put the question out recently and it was, I really struggle standing up in meetings and giving a talk. Can you do mm. one on presenting? I'm pretty good at presenting. So, okay, yeah, I can give you I can give you a masterclass. I'll give you some tips if you need some advice. Or it, or it can be anything. So I interview people from neuroscientists to, to doctors, medical health practitioners, Olympians, Olympic coaches, mm. uh, leaders in their field, and pick out what I think are the most accessible and easy to use bits of advice that, that they can give. You know, and I'll be honest, when we first started, I was going in too deep. I was, it was an hour long class. It was a 42 yeah. page workbook. And I realized it's, no, that's, heavy. it's too heavy. And this is what we've done over the past but it, but 16 months. It came months, from a place learning. you just wanted to make yeah. sure yeah, no, you gave course, so much value. So Sometimes much less value. is more though, isn't it? It, yes. it is. And that's what we've, we've worked out. But j just to add on to what Andrea's saying there about the two levels, you know, it's not just a monetary decision that they have to make. It's a time, time decision because, you know, that the slightly higher level, okay, which is just over a pound a day, is you have to commit more time because it's like we, we talk about this all the time. Learning stuff is half of it. Mm. If you don't apply it, it's almost pointless, mm. right? You know, we all know that we need to be healthy. We all know that we need to move. But if you don't do it, you're not serving yourself and you're not looking after yourself mm. the right way. Are the lessons you're offering, your experts are offering, your life coaches are offering, are they mostly psychological or are there, are there, are there, are there classes, coaching sessions in, in diet, in exercise, everything, in every, child rearing, yeah. well, in being a grandparent or whatever Funny enough, we do actually... So imagine it like a gym for the mind, mm. okay? So today you're going to exercise 
uh, on the treadmill or you're going to go on the bike or you're going to use kettlebells. So there is a wide variety of subjects included in the master classes and the guides and the meditations. But ultimately, it's all about how we think about that particular subject. So we've got Dale Pinnock. He did a wonderful masterclass. He's called the Medicinal Chef. Um, I, 17 uh, Sunday Times number one bestseller. I mean, he, he knows his stuff. Mm. So he's put on a lovely masterclass. And each masterclass, 30 minutes, three easy takeaways that you can apply in your life. So even if you just do that and apply them, and that's what we do, but it's all about how you think about it. So there's no seven day quick fixes or 30 day quick fixes. You know, this is about what you do consistently over your life. Same with our health. You know, you do something for 30 days, brilliant. That's great, you've got that done. But if you then zoom out and look at that over your entire life, that is a mere blip. So we try and encourage people to create the habits and the mindset that they need to keep doing the right things for them over a longer period of time so they get the longer reward for it. I'm going to ask you a question, Andrew, if I may, and I'm going to put the same question to Nick so you get some thinking time, <laughs> which may or may not help you. So tell me about what it is in your background. Obviously, you're, you're a very well-established television presenter and a, a successful proven writer, but what is it particularly about you that makes you write to be doing this now? Age plays a big part in it. I'm in my 50s now. Um, obviously, as I said, writing is something that I've I've always done and always mm. wanted to do. I did my first work experience at 15 with a local paper. So it's, you know, that was a little while ago. Um, but now I think it's because I've had a pretty bumpy life so far. And I've been quite open about the bumps in, in my road. And the... The, the people that I've turned to for help, the, the lessons that I've learned and the U-turns that I've made and the different roads that, that I've traveled. So for me, I feel like I'm able to pay it forward. I'm not someone who's kind of got through life unscathed and is sitting very shinily on a cloud somewhere telling people this is this is really how you got to do stuff if you want to be as awesome as I am. It's actually the opposite. Some people may think that of you with all due yeah. respect. No, and I get They that. may think that yeah, about I, you. They may think you got this wonderful shiny life. Mm. Well, I, I, I have a shiny life that I've created of my own volition after face planting many times and getting back up again. Um, and how I feel now, why is it my place to do it now? Because I know I can help. I, I know I've made a difference already and all I want to do is just keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that. It's, um, it's, it's, it's quite a parenting feeling, I suppose. You know, we're the parents of teenagers and you, you see it with your kids every day. All you're doing is trying to give the, the best advice, knowing that you can't do anything for someone, they need to do it for themselves. But if you can show that I've been where you are, mm. you know, I've, I've experienced what you're experiencing and I've found ways that help you through. Nick, what about you? I'm gonna do the team in a moment because the dynamic between you will interest people and, and how you work together and how sometimes you don't work together like any partnership. It, I'm sure there are complexities. But what is it about you and your background that makes you right to be reaching out to people and asking them to pay for you and Andrea to curate a kind of, you know, a suite of, of advice for them to enhance their lives? Do you know, I, I think the word right uh, might be a bit, uh, a bit of a funny one to use. But ultimately, you will, you will either like us mm. and we will resonate with you or not. Mm. And like Andrea, I've, you know, I've done a lot of things in my life that have gone really, really well. And I've done a lot of things in my life that haven't gone really, really well. And one of the things that we, we sit as we, we rest in our, our middle years is actually when we look back at individuals, some of them around our own age, some of them younger, you talked about the age demographic, you have a 19-year-old and a 67-year-old and anything in between. If you know that you've gone through something and you've learned and you're able to pay it forward, then for us, that's what we do. And actually, one of our core values as a business is we learn 
and pay it forward. And we love that about our job. Mm. We get to read books. We get to interview incredible people. We get to fill our cup with knowledge um, and then go out and then just share it with our community. And one of the things as well, we are accredited life coaches. We are doing another accredited um, coaching program. We are committed to each year adding to that as well. You're bona fides, if you like. Indeed, but we still don't sit as the experts. We still bring the experts in. All that accreditation, all that helps us do. You select. Is, well, but also ask better questions, mm. you know, because the more you know about it, and this is the reason we went through it, is because as a mentor, all you do is share your life experiences, isn't it? And when that happened to me, this is what I did. And when that came across, this is how I dealt with that. And that's, that's as a mentor. But as a coach, it's about how you get them asking themselves better questions and pull that information out of their, themselves because they know themselves better than anyone. So we just wanted to make sure that we never did anything that would go against that. Mm. And that's why we're absolutely committed and within our team as well, who get to access to all the master classes uh, themselves, that we just grow and we just keep growing and we just keep paying it forward. What's he like to work with, Andrew? <laughs> Shall I go now? I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a big deal. You, it you, is, you yeah. sold your, your house to fund this business, setting up an app, getting to the stage you're at. It's mm -hmm. a six-digit operation and the rest. Mm -hmm. um, you've obviously combined, you've chosen to combine your personal life with your work life. Pretty high-risk strategy, madam. Yes, thank you very much. It is. Um, it is. It's, it's an interesting dynamic because obviously we, we're a blended family. We've come together mm. later in life. That in itself is a strength because by the time you do get to your middle years, you, you know what you don't want as much as you know what, what you do. Um, it's, it's a balancing act. And anyone who says there's no such thing as balance, you're right. There's no such thing as that perfect moment that lasts forever because you're constantly doing this. As in, we are husband and wife. We are parents. We are step parents. We are uh, our, our business partners. We've been through every kind of stress that you could possibly imagine. And I quit my job in the middle of a pandemic and during lockdown. Pretty good job. Uh, and it was intense. Big deal. It was intense. It was very intense. How do we make it work? I think uh, we we're honest with each other. We have this thing where we 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 say to each other, "I need to say an ugly truth." And it, it gives the other person a sort of heads up that, oh, there's something that's going mm. to be a little bit uncomfortable. And what we've learned with that is actually it means that you can say what you're feeling without it necessarily sparking a huge argument because the other person can say, okay, well, I need to say an ugly truth now. Actually, I don't really like what you're doing there or I take offense to that or what, or what have you. For us, it's talking it's communication well we went to counseling you're clearly a lucky man right <laughs> on many occasions what's, right? she, what's she really like do you know what she uh as an individual she she is genuinely what you see is what you get you know she really is awesome and uh, and i stand by that comment that i said you know the last year and a half just watching her grow into her role because when she first started and we were talking about okay if you quit what's that going to look like? We may have to sell the house. What's that going to... So we had those conversations long before they ever happened. And the biggest issue or concern that Andrea had was imposter syndrome. You know, I'm just a presenter. I just turn up. I, everything's organized for me. Now I've got to do all the organizing. What does that look like? So watching her grow into that role and blossom just actually makes her even more adorable than what she is now. But don't get me wrong. When we do work, there are frustrations obviously but one of the things that we do is we do see a coach a relationship coach mm. wow. uh, and the reason being we do it not because we're broken we do it from a position of strength because we anticipate okay so that's going to happen Ooh, that means we're going to spend a lot more time together how are we going to manage that so let's go and talk that through and then Landry will say, you know, look what she just said there, we have an ugly truth. Okay, oh, I didn't realize that was happening. And I don't know, or we can't quite see how we can have the tools to get past that. Brilliant. Let's go and talk to our coach. You know, and this is, this is what even our app is about. 
you know, mental health is health. It doesn't mean that, you know, you are desperate and really seeking, you know, because we need to be careful how we sort of layer mental health mm. because there are certain people that our app is not for. They need one-on-one, -on -one, they need to go and see a counsellor. And we've mm. made that mistake with some people that we allowed in before, mm. right? But I think the thing is sometimes life can be going great for you, but you just don't know what's next or how to change something slightly to get something more from it. So looking at any sort of coaching from a position of strength is actually a really, it's a power move quite honestly. And, and it's something for us, I think, that massively helps us be in the relationships that we are. Can I just add something? He also plays a lot of golf. <laughs> Which is, helps. It's, great. Well, it's that's a valve. Really great. <laughs> that's my time. Get out of my face, golf. <laughs> yeah. Andrew, yeah. final question to you. Isn't all business, isn't any startup, isn't doing anything new all about overcoming imposter syndrome? Yeah, and I, I heard a really brilliant quote about imposter syndrome that actually you should see it as a really healthy feeling because what it's telling you is that you don't think you know enough about something. Brilliant, go and learn more. And actually I realized that was what I needed to do, was just learn more. So anyone who is whether you're, a, you're thinking of starting your own business or you're thinking of totally going 90 degrees in terms of the career path that you're, you're going on, if you feel imposter syndrome, it's your mind is telling you you don't think you know enough. So learn more. And then it goes. Angela McLean, Nick Feeney, best of luck with your big adventure. This girl is on fire. Thank you. Thank you.